sponsored by Instabug, who have an SDK to help you minimize debugging time by providing you with complete device details, network logs, and reproduction steps with every bug report. Find out more at instabug.com. Hello, my name is Paul, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through 24 Xcode tips in about 15 minutes. It's gonna be extremely fast, so let's get straight to the tips. In Swift, all structs get a memberwise initializer synthesized directly by the compiler to make them easier to create. This here is a class though, so it won't get one. You've got to make your own initializer. Fortunately, Xcode can help. Select the class name, then go to the editor menu and choose refactor, then choose generate memberwise initializer. Boom, it'll do all the work for you. You can then move that wherever you want it. I prefer mine below the property list, like that, and you're done. When building software, it's important to make sure your app works for everyone. And Xcode has lots of tools in place to help you do just that. For example, while your app's running, you can go down here and choose Environment Overrides. This will override parts of the way the simulator works live while you watch. For example, I might say, let's override the font with a larger dynamic type size. And you see it adapts immediately so I can see exactly how it's going to look, even at very, very large sizes. Or you could say, I want to turn on bold text and perhaps also button shapes. And again, you can see exactly how that looks right here live in the simulator. There is an option for toggling between light mode and dark mode, but often a quicker version to do that is to have the simulator selected and just press Shift Command and A to toggle the appearance live. You probably already know that you can click after a brace like here or here to see the matching brace highlighted. But another great tip is to find any brace you want and double click it. For example, this one here. That'll select the entire block of code that belongs to those braces. As well as checking your code's correct, Xcode can also check your spelling is correct. And it's really smart too. For example, I could have hello world. I could instead say hello rolled, a typo. And of course I can get away with that just fine. But if you go to the edit menu and choose format, then spelling and grammar, you can now select check spelling while typing. It'll highlight for me world is wrong, it should be world. Like I said, this is super smart. If you had a property, for example, let example property name equals false, obviously that's not a real word, but it can tell the camel case, capital P, capital N, it'll understand the separate words. Whereas if I had a lowercase p, it would be example property, now it'd highlight it being incorrect. If you've got a Swift file like this one with multiple errors inside, of course you can go through every single one individually and press fix again and again and again. Alternatively, for lots of errors, you might find it easier to go to the editor menu and choose fix all issues. To have Xcode apply the fix it across the board. When you do a search using Xcode's Find Navigator, all the results line up here on the left of your window. You then click on any one of these things to review the code and make any amendments you want to. But when you're done, I recommend you press the backspace key to remove the search item from the results so you know exactly which ones you reviewed so far and which ones you still have to review. This is such a simple Xcode tip, but it will save you time if you don't already know it. Often when editing Swift UI code, you'll see this, automatic preview updating paused. You can of course resume this by pressing the resume button up here, but the shortcut's really easy and really useful. It is option command P, and it acts like the resume button, and it'll pop up straight away whenever you want it. Or if you're like me, and you prefer not to have the canvas up most of the time, you can hide it with option command return, like that. It can be annoying having to regularly move from simulator back to Xcode, to simulator, to Xcode, and so on. Fortunately, there's a really simple fix. With a simulator selected, choose a window menu, and then choose tile window to right of screen. And then select Xcode on the left. You then resize this down to fit how much space it needs, and you're done. They'll both stay side by side the entire time. Xcode has great code completion built right into it. You can just go ahead and press dot, and then type some letters. For example, access. However, sometimes as you scroll through, you might find the names are quite long. For example, here, you'll see they're clipped at the end with an ellipsis. 
Fortunately, you can actually just grab this window on the side here and pull it out as big or as small as you'd like to read the full thing. Breakpoints are a critical tool in our debugging toolkit, and you can place them anywhere by left clicking on the line number in the gutter area. Then to remove it, right click and choose Delete Breakpoint. Alternatively, left click to place, then click and drag to remove. But the method I prefer is much simpler, just on the line you're on right now, press Command Backslash to toggle a breakpoint on or off for that line. The best way to write stable software is to write great tests, but sometimes that's not enough. You see, sometimes the output from one test can affect the input to another test, and then you've got real problems. There's no clean slate anymore. To fix this, Xcode's got a simple solution. Go to the product menu, hold down the option key, and then choose test. In this box here, look for the info tab, then press this options button, then press randomize execution order. And now it'll run your tests in a different order every time to make sure they don't accidentally depend on each other. When you're working in a long file and you want to navigate around quickly, you should use the jump bar. It's up here, just press this and it'll show you all the methods and properties in one list, including dividers and any markers you've placed. If it's too long for you, just start typing to get a filter. For example, I could type review here to see only things that have review somewhere in the name. And this type to filter thing works in the other bars as well. For example, over here in the simulator selection area, I could start typing. I could say, show me only pro model devices. We're halfway through this video now, so I just want to say, if you're enjoying it, subscribe to my channel. I make lots more videos like this one teaching you Swift, Swift UI, UI kit, and more. Anyway, back to the tips. When browsing through someone else's Swift code, it's common to want to get an overview of how the thing works, rather than getting bogged down in lots and lots of lines of code. Well, Excel can do that for you. Just go to the file you want, press Control, Command, and Up, and it will generate a synthesized interface for that file, showing things like the enum keys, the properties, any comments, and any method names, with no bodies of those methods, just the signatures themselves. Even better, you can press Control Command up again and go to another related file. In this case, it's my tests. So you can browse around these related files very, very easily to get a good overview of how the code actually works. Xcode has two powerful shortcuts for working with comments. The first one's nice and simple. Just go ahead and select some code and then press Command and Slash to comment the code or Command and Slash again to uncomment the code. The second one's for documentation comments. Move your cursor before any method, then press Option Command Slash, and it will generate a documentation comment for that method, pulling out the parameter names, argument, and completion here for you to fill in. As your projects grow in size, it can be increasingly hard to use a project navigator to find the exact files that you want. There are two ways to fix this. The first one is to right click on any group you want, and then choose Sort These Files by Their Name, and it will resort that group alphabetically. The second one's down here in the filter box. Just type a few letters, for example, Battery, and it'll show only files that match that search. Xcode does a great job of handling interactive source control changes right inside its editor. To try it out, go to the Xcode menu, then choose Preferences, go to the Source Control tab, and make sure Show Source Control Changes is checked. Once that's done, go ahead and make your change. For example, here, I might say, I want to have the quality of service of user interactive, a change. And now here on the left, you'll see Line 55 has got a blue bar next to it saying this line's changed. But there's more. You can click on this blue bar and select show change. And it'll show you a before and after a live diff of your code and it'll update as you add more code to it. Every new line will come along in blue like that. Xcode has a mini-map for browsing around longer Swift files effectively. You can enable it by going to the Editor menu, and then choosing Mini-Map. And one of the cool things it does is, as you hover your mouse over it, it'll tell you the name of the method you're looking at in the mini-map. So here's Execute with Completion, down here's Execute Subject, and so forth. We can also hold down the Command key to reveal all the things inside the mini-map, and then just click on one to jump straight to it. 
It's very common to write code that fails tests, particularly when using TDD. Fortunately, Xcode has a special shortcut in place to rerun your previous test and only that one. The shortcut's this, Control, Option, Command, and G. It'll run just the previous test and not any others. Very, very fast. The writer John Reed, who blogs at qualitycoding.org, calls this a very memorable name, Smash Go. Control, Option, Command, G. If you're like me, you'll rely very heavily on Xcode's keyboard shortcuts, but it's very easy to make mistakes. For example, you might try and go for Open Quickly, which is Shift Command O, but by accident you press Shift Command P and get Page Setup, which is useful for the never times you want to print out your source code. Similarly, Command P for printing. Again, never going to happen. Fortunately, you can replace these with better shortcuts. Go to Xcode's menu and choose Preferences, then go to the Key Bindings tab and use a filter box to search for the ones you want to change. For example, we looked at Page Setup, so I'll select this one here, then press Backspace to delete that command entirely. And we looked at Print, again I'll search for Print, here it is here, Command P, I'll press Backspace and it's zapped, gone. No more keyboard shortcut for printing, no more accidental key presses. However, that shortcut's now free for more important things. For example, you might use SwiftUI a lot and say, the canvas, I want to refresh that more easily. And right now it's Option Command P. I can replace that by selecting the keyboard shortcut and say instead, you're now promoted to Command P. Xcode's Find Navigator is a brilliant tool for helping you find and replace text inside your project. All these titles up here can be clicked on to be changed. For example, this is Find Right Now, it could also be replace. This is text right now. It could be references or regular expressions or call hierarchy or more. And we have containing. It could be matching or starting or ending with stuff. There's another great feature here, which is found by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. It'll show you your recent searches. And you can select any one of these things to show the results immediately. When you're trying to solve a problem in your project and you take some code from hacking with Swift or Stack Overflow or somewhere else, you might find code like this in your project. No indenting at all. Fortunately, Xcode can fix this with a single keyboard shortcut. Just select the code, then press Control I and Xcode will re-indent it correctly. You can test in-app purchases right inside Xcode and the simulator. First, press Command N to make a new file then search for store kit configuration file and press next and save it wherever you want it. When this file opens, go ahead and press plus to make a new file, then choose the kind of in-app purchase you want. For example, I'll choose a non-consumable one. You can then name this thing. I'll call this thing premium unlock. Give it an ID. I'll use com.hackingwithswift.premium and a price and check whether family sharing should work or not. Then when you've done that, go ahead to the product menu, hold down option and choose run. You now see some options here in the options tab and you want to choose store configuration, change that from none to be your new configuration. And now you're testing in a simulator, any in-app purchase calls will use that test file directly rather than going through App Store Connect. There are many build settings to customize the way Xcode builds your project, but it can be hard to remember what they all do. Fortunately, nearly all of them are documented. To find out what one does, just select it. For example, enable bitcode. Then go to the quick help inspector on the right of Xcode's window, and you'll see a full description here. Alternatively, go to the thing, hold down option, and double click. And a window will appear directly over the option with the same text. Xcode's canvas is a great way to preview your SwiftUI layout easily but it's less good when your views are split across multiple files. For example, here I've got a list of 100 rows, and each one is a numbered row view, a separate view. Now let's say I want to see what my list looks like with the row font being larger. I might start doing that over a numbered row.swift, but now my preview has changed because I'm on a different file. Fortunately, Xcode can do better than this. Go back to your previous view, the one you want to keep on screen, then look for, down below the preview, this little thumbtack, little pin image at the very bottom there. And now that preview's pinned in place and will not change, which means I can go back to numbered row.swift and make changes, and that preview won't move. I'll say, for example, uh, .font, 
got large title and I'll preview the previous view with my change right there. And that's it, all 24 Xcode tips in just over 15 minutes. But now it's your turn. What's your favorite tip to get the most from Xcode? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video and want to learn more about Xcode, Swift, SwiftUI, and much more.